It's day seven. We're in a season of fasting and prayer. Listen to these sustaining words found in Joshua 1.5. These were words that Joshua not only heard in his ears, they didn't just land here, but they landed right in his spirit and they sustained him for the season that was ahead. He said this to him, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Joshua, I will be with you and I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. In other, in other words, you'll never enter a situation alone. I want to encourage you, let this land in your spirit like it landed in Joshua's, that no matter what situation you face, you are accompanied. You're accompanied with his leadership, with his counsel, with his help, with his power, with his spirit of faith, with his love, you are accompanied. He said, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life because his goodness and his mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Of course, we're in a season of fasting and praying and he's speaking and we're hearing. And anytime he tells you to do something, often it goes beyond personal preference. It goes beyond and it's outside of popular opinion. It's gonna stretch you to follow the instruction that he tells you to do. But know this, that every word that he gives you, it is accompanied with power to follow the word that he gave you. When he called Peter to come out of the boat, he said, come, and Peter stepped out. He came and was moved by that one word because that one word of instruction had within it the power to sustain him when he obeyed it. Hallelujah. You're going to hear from the Lord this season and be determined to hear, but also be determined in this time to get to know the Holy Spirit more intimately, more intimately, like you never could on a full belly. You know, people say, how can you go without food? You know, from sunup to sundown, from six to six, how can you go with no food? For 21 days, if you can't overcome the power of your belly, how can you overcome the power of your enemy? Listen, we are making statements by suppressing the flesh. We're saying what's more important right now is hearing the voice of the Lord than filling my body with something physical. I'm filling my spirit with that which is spiritual and I'll be sustained by that. We're making a statement that I'm not flesh led, I'm spirit led. I'm not head led, money led, emotions led, people led. No, we are spirit led. Glory to God. Over the last several days we've been looking at some of the benefits of fasting. We've been looking at what fasting is, but let me just take a moment to let, let you know what fasting isn't. It isn't manipulating God, God to do something outside of God's will. No, it's not earning the blessings of God or the favor of God. No, the blood of Jesus did that, has done that, released that, made that possible. You don't get what you deserve. You can't deserve God's best blessings, no. But what fasting does do, it gets you in a place of readiness to hear God's answer. It gets your heart in a place to pray such prayers like this. Father, not my will, but your will be done. I'm ready to drop my will and pick up yours. See, food isn't a bad thing. But what we are doing when we don't fill our lives with it, we're making room for what God wills to fill our hearts with. We're positioning ourselves in, in a place of total obedience and total humility before the Lord. Of course, yesterday we talked about how fasting and prayer provokes the angelic and, and heaven. And we saw in Daniel, and let me just turn there, Daniel chapter 10, when Daniel was praying and fasting, an angel, the Lord came and spoke these words to him. Don't be afraid, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. In other words, your fasting provokes attention. It grabs the attention of, faith, of God. See, fasting is an act of humility. The Bible tells us to humble ourselves. God won't humble you, but you've got to humble yourself. Fasting is an act of humility, but it's also an act of faith. It, and faith grabs God's attention. I love the story of uh, the four friends who grabbed the attention of Jesus. For they brought their friend who was paralyzed. He was on a stretcher right 
in the midst of Jesus, the great healer. Of course, the room was filled where Jesus was teaching. And, and so in order to get him right before Jesus, right in front of his feet, they climbed on the building. They, they broke through that physical barrier, the, the roof, and lowered their friend right to the feet. And of course, the Bible says that when Jesus saw them lower him, Jesus also saw their faith. That's what the Bible says. Jesus saw their faith. See, fasting is an act of faith and an act of humility. And what grabs God's attention is faith. I believe even in this season that you're grabbing the attention of God. It's an act of humility. You're saying right now, God, I don't need food. What's more important than food in my belly is your word in my spirit. I forsake the natural for the spiritual. And when you humble yourself, the Bible says, in due season, God will exalt you. There is a due season and he'll promote you. Divine promotion comes because fasting is an act of humility. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Paul wrote this, I beseech you or I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He said, in light of the mercies of God, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, or in light of the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and an acceptable or pleasing to God. It is your reasonable service. One translation says, this is your true and proper worship. Fasting is an act of worship. Instead of filling your mouth with food, you're filling your mouth with praise and worship. Oh, glory to God. Just turn, turn to the last scripture for today. Psalm 149, verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. One translation says, you know, um, God's high praises fills their mouth for their shouted praises are their weapons of war. See, Worship is your weapon to do business for the kingdom of heaven. See, we do kingdom business. We wage war on the forces of darkness. In fact, I believe it says in the next verse that, uh, that, that when the, the children use their weapons of war, it brings vengeance on every opposing force and every resistant power. Even right now, Father God, as we lift up holy hands in worship before you, as we fill our mouth with worship instead of filling our mouth with praise, every opposing force is pushed back. The, the enemy of lack is, is pushed back. The enemy of sickness is pushed back in the name of Jesus. Every resistant power, anything that's resisting the move of the Spirit, the power of God, we push it back by our praise and our worship and our acts of humility in Jesus' precious name. Be encouraged. Your faith is catching the eye of, eye of our Lord. And I'm telling you, it's bringing about great resurrection power. There's a breaking forth and a great tapping in of that which has been released through Jesus Christ. It's an act of true worship. Let's continue worshiping and keep on praying and fasting during this season. It's church day tomorrow. You know what that means. Let's not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It's another opportunity for us just to unite together, jump right into that corporate anointing, that powerful anointing, and see God move within our midst. We love you.